and welcome back to this uh, I24 News Evening Edition, Special Edition. I'm Lucia Rich, and this is the Daily Debate. As the 68th session of the General Assembly, I think that I said General Assembly more than uh, Benjamin Netanyahu saying Iran in his speech is well underway. Joining me in the studio tonight to discuss the main events of the assembly are uh, Owen Alterman, a researcher at the Institute for National Security Studies, and Professor Zaki Shalom, senior researcher at Ben Gurion uh, University, as well as the INSS. Welcome you both. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to the Thank studio. You. Thank you. So let's start. What do you think? Was it typical Benjamin Netanyahu? Or was it different, Benjamin Netanyahu? Well, I think any speech where he uses the word Iran as many times as he has <laughs> is fairly typical. This is obviously a prime minister for whom this issue is foremost in his mind and has been for this for his entire his entire uh, terms as prime minister. And sure, he's coming out into the international stage at a very sensitive time and trying to put this in front of the delegates, in front of the world. And uh, from his perspective, we'll hope, we will hope that he's succeeded, and I think from Israel's perspective as well. What do you think? Well, I think this was exceptional even for Netanyahu. I think if we want to be not very diplomatic, what he was telling actually President Obama is, is I heard your voice. You say they're all option on the table, but I really don't trust that you are going to take the military option against Iran. Was he actually a little bit, can we say, uh, criticizing Barack Obama of course, was, in uh, the music of he said it he, he said he said that Iran managed to fool the whole world including the United States for a long period of he time he was criticizing the whole international community I have to say especially the United States especially Barack Obama that's what he said he said he, he said that the Iranian think they are going to to go away with it to succeed in it because they've already succeeded in, in the first place so why not going on fooling the whole world so uh, let's so get back. Just uh, let's get back for the for the last few days. What exactly happened in this general assembly that really the whole world fell into the charm of Hassan Rouhani? To some extent, it beats me. <laughs> um, but look, I, I think the world really wants to believe that a solution is possible here. And look, it, it may it may well be that a solution is possible. We shouldn't. You know, foreclose the possibility that there is some kind of an agreement here that will be acceptable to Israel and to our interests. And I, I wish that our prime minister would say that. Um, I think it's I think it's fair to delegitimize Rouhani. I think it's fair to use the soundbite that he used about Rouhani being a wolf in sheep's clothing. At the same time, it's a delicate issue. I think we shouldn't come out and say we're opposed to, demo to diplomacy per se and to diplomacy in principle because we support it. We would love nothing more than to have Iran agree to give up its nuclear program. And to the extent that there is time left before the re our red line has been crossed to give diplomacy a chance to work, I think we should support it, even if we're skeptical about it. And but I think at the same time, it's fair to delegitimize the, the president and to to make our skepticism known, because Iran, it, the burden of proof is on them. Professor Shalom. Look, Netanyahu said it. He said the world is tired of wars. Actually, the world wants to hear those voices from Iran, because this gives him the justification to do nothing about Iran. And he is scared for that, rightly so, in, in my view. And that's why he had to put things in a quite blunt way. I mean, it's, it wasn't really diplomatic what he was, it, it was the way he put, he put things. But I don't think he had any other chance because, you see, he looks at Obama's behavior and attitude towards Syria, and he saw how the way he treats Syria. And now he says if he's going to face something that is much bigger than Syria, how he's going to act. So he is scared that this whole, this whole effort through the years to, to put Iran to stop the, the nuclear project are going to fail. So yeah. let's uh, let's hear what he had to say about. Okay. I don't believe Hassan Rouhani. Listen up. I wish I could believe Rouhani, but I don't. Because facts are stubborn things, and the facts are that Iran's savage record flatly contradicts Rouhani's soothing rhetoric. Not only that he was saying that facts matter, he actually proposed to the world what to do. He gave the world options what to do yeah. to deal with the Iranian he gives, uh, because nuclear force. I think his tactic is clear. I give you what I think should be done. If you don't do it, let us do it alone. The, he was seeking actually a justification for a unilateral Israeli uh, action against Iran. That's what he, he made. This was the main theme of his speech. Can you come to a general assembly and actually 
tell the world what to do? Well, you can try. Uh, as we've seen from the United Nations, they don't always follow Israel's instructions. Um, but look, of course, it's fair to, to carve out the and to make to make the case and to get you know to legitimize the option, the military option. But again, I think it's very important for Israel not to be seen as a warmonger and for Israel not to be seen as pushing the idea of military force. I think you know, and again, let's not forget all that we've had so far: are a few nice speeches and a 15-minute phone call between the two presidents. We haven't had any real negotiations. And it may be that when these negotiations start, they'll fail right away, or they'll fail in their own, of, their own, of their own course. And if that's the case, there's no reason for us to get out in front of that process. We might as well just let that process fail. And then the legitimacy will happen on its own. So I think we have to be careful of an overreaction. Uh, but, uh, we'll go on. It's a, it, it I, I want to stress this again, because Netanyahu doesn't speak in an in a, a empty background. I mean, he has the background of Syria. The president, in his own voice, made a clear red line to the Syrians. And they have crossed it on his face, and he has done nothing. So Netanyahu has, has, uh, has uh, the right to, to think that this might happen again with regard to Iran. And while Syria doesn't pose an uh, existential threat to Israel, Iran does. Let's so, hear him. Let's hear him saying that. Israel will never acquiesce to nuclear arms in the hands of a rogue regime that repeatedly promises to wipe us off the map. Against such a threat, Israel will have no choice but to defend itself. I want there to be no confusion on this point. Israel will not allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. Basically, uh, what he said that we will attack if we will have to attack, we will attack alone. We don't need you. We'll be saving the world. But isn't it a little bit patronizing? Perhaps, but it's also our right to do to, to do this. I mean, listen, Israel has been to very patient. To save the world? Well, listen, Israel has <laughs> been very patient on this issue. I mean, and that's why I think it's extra important at this point to emphasize our patience and to not be seen, again, as pushing the military option. Israel's been very patient on this issue. I mean, negotiations on this nuclear program have been going on for 15, 20 years. And we haven't seen an Israeli military strike yet. So we have been giving diplomacy a chance. And I think we have to make clear to the world that we've done that. And sure, it's, it's fair to, to set out the case for why military strike might be necessary. And I think it's also fair to set out the case of why the burden of proof is on Iran and why Iran has not yet done anything to meet that burden. Uh, at the same time, I think it's important to also say that, in principle, we're not against diplomacy and we're not against negotiation. I think this is a very smart uh, tactic by, by Netanyahu, because actually he knows that the world doesn't want Israel to operate on its own. And the world is scared, especially the United States is scared that it will be dragged into the war if it wants or it doesn't want. So they will have to do something to compensate Israel. And that's what that he, he said is that you, you don't want us to act, do what we want. If you don't do it, we will act. So I think it's a, tactically it's a, it's a good because in this way he's going to get the sanctions going on ahead with the Iran. And more than that, he is even afraid that, that Iran will become the new North Korea in the Middle East. Let's hear what he yeah, had to say about that. But as dangerous as a nuclear armed North Korea is, it pales in comparison to the danger of a nuclear armed Iran. A nuclear armed Iran would have a chokehold on the world's main energy supplies. It would t trigger nuclear proliferation throughout the Middle East, turning the most unstable part of the planet into a nuclear tinderbox. And for the first time in history, it would make the specter of nuclear terrorism a clear and present danger. A nuclear-armed Iran in the Middle East wouldn't be another North Korea. It would be another 50 North Koreas. So we heard about North Korea, we heard about Iran, 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 and again Iran, and then we heard a little bit about the Palestinian, the renewal of peace talks between the Palestinian and the Israelis, and he is saying that uh, Israel will be willing to do some serious... Um, painful concessions. Exactly, yeah, painful yes. concessions. But he wants the other side also to, be, to, to go forward towards Israel. And what he's asking are two things. First of all, recognition by the Palestinians of Israel as a state of the Jewish people. 
And second, the, 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 at the end, this will be the end of the claims of the Palestinians altogether. He said, that's what, my, in my view, we were telling them, if you're going to go ahead with that, we will be going towards you. If you don't, we'll stay on our own. Sure, and these are long-standing talking points for Netanyahu and for Israeli governments. And again, they represent consensus positions among Israelis. And uh, sure, and I, it's not surprising to see them there. Of course, the leaks from the talks have said that the talks have actually broken down on a much more granular issue so far, on the issue of the land swaps and so forth. Uh, but again, let's not lose sight of the bigger context, which is exactly the ones Zaki pointed to. I want to ask you, you know, you come to, the, to take a speech on the General Assembly, and you want to put the country, the, the, the agenda that you have, uh, outside. You want, is this the agenda that we want to put outside? Only this? Are we only worried about Iran? Is Iran the one and only problem that we have? Or good thing, we don't have any good things in Israel that we can promote in the General Assembly? You're absolutely right. A, fair, a, fair, a very fair criticism. And in fact, when you talk to Israelis who are involved in diplomacy at the UN, this is a common question. You know, should Israel use the UN and use UN forums for making the points in these issues? Or should Israel use the UN or attempt to use the UN as a forum for cooperation with other countries, which we do in many ways. But we can emphasize more our cooperation on issues of international development, um, on agriculture development, on issues of water, major problems facing uh, the developing world where Israel has, has great things to offer and great contributions to make. And sure, that, that could only help. I Absolutely. think there are many this case, although he was very short in that. He said that while the, this, the region around us is going a, a bit tremendous upheaval and sort of anarchy, Israel is a stable state, flourishing uh, economy, and uh, it's, a, it's a democracy, and we're reliable, and so on. So he said it, but I think I agree with Owen that maybe this should have been more and more uh, stress in the in, the, in his speech. Okay. Yeah, because I think the issue is not so much the contrast between us and the rest of the region, but what it is that we have to offer countries both in the region and really beyond it. And Israel is very active in these programs, and we, of course, could do more, and I suspect Israel will do more in the decades to come. Um, let's assume that uh, uh, Barack Obama, U.S. Uh, President Barack Obama, didn't listen to the speech tonight. Tomorrow he can't afford he's, himself. Yeah. I think he's <laughs> he busy with a few he other problems. He's right. busy with a few <laughs> things. In the next few days, he will listen to what Benjamin Netanyahu had to say, and we heard the criticism, like you said. What will be his reaction? Because there was big criticism. Well, he has to cool him. He has to, 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 he has to make sure that he really, Israel doesn't undertake a military action. I think the United States is afraid of an Israeli military operation against Iran. I think it seems as a credible threat. It's, it's not bluffing. The Netanyahu isn't bluffing. The United States uh, knows that, and uh, we have seen through the last years how many American officials came to Israel and uh, to, to persuade us not to undertake this uh, this action. So I think that if he wants Israel not to act, he will have to compensate him. So there is a a deal has to be found between them. And don't Once forget, this isn't the only thing that Netanyahu, excuse me, that President Obama will be hearing when he's able to come back to this issue. He's because he's not only hearing from Prime Minister Netanyahu, he's hearing from King Abdullah in Saudi Arabia. He's hearing from the from other Gulf states. He's hearing from other from Egypt, from Jordan, from other U.S. allies in the region. And most importantly, for the president, I think after uh, whatever, however, this shutdown issue is resolved, he'll be hearing from members of Congress. And so it won't only be Netanyahu that's. Uh, tapping on his shoulder and whispering in his ear, it's going to be a whole lot of other people. I think just yeah, another small is, point uh, that I think Netanyahu made is that the Arab world, the moderate Arab state, the pro-Western state are scared from Iran just as, as well. we are. Yeah, as and well. I have to say that much. he was a very good representative for them as well. Exactly. Not oh, only sure. for They Israel. cannot say it, sure. but he says for them. Sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you very much for this uh, insight Pleasure. on the 68th General Assembly in New York. Again, I'm saying this phrase. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going for an uh, update from our news desk. Ten minutes break, and then I'm back for the I-24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere. Thank you.